So from the most recent song I've written to the very beginning, I remember the, the very moment that music went from something that happens to me to something that I could participate in. I was lying on my grandmother's shag 70s carpet and I was listening to, uh, looking at the faces in the audience. Some of you might know this song. There was a Ardeen Taylor song that went, Indiana wants me, Lord, I can't go back there. Indiana wants me. And in the middle of it, there's a police siren. And I would put that 45 record on over and over and over again and just like hold on to my Matchbox 20 police car and wait through the whole rest of the song like, And then when the siren would happen, I'd go, and I'd drive it around like, this is real now. The siren is happening. And, and like a lot of people's grandparents' living rooms, next to the shag carpet where I was playing with those was one of those, one of those organs that looked like th those wooden uh, station wagons, like all fake wood, sort of, with a big gas pedal on it that was the volume and a whole bunch of stuff on it. And I realized that this is also a music making thing like that record player. And if I sit on it, I can pretend that that volume pedal is the gas. So I'll dial up, Indiana wants me. And when it's the police part, I won't just be playing with the car anymore. I'll be pressing the gas on this thing. And lo and behold, when I pressed on the gas, it turned on and it started making noises. And I realized that I could, I could if I was playing the organ, I could make it go, I could play the siren myself. What an epiphany that was. And it was also one of those organs that had like the right hand was keyboard keys and the left hand were those buttons like for beginners where you just, you just press a D minor button and it would go. And I was like, that's all there is to it? Dude, I can do this all day. How about we go to C? So then I, I was like, I'm going to be a musician. That's what I'm going to do with my life. This is all I have to do is just learn how to press buttons, and I can make siren sounds. And I, can and I went on this, this real circuitous route to kind of get back to there. Like I, I've endeavored to get schooled and learn all about the, the, you know, learn the history of music and learn. Uh, I'm horrible if someone says, what kind of tree is that? I'm like, it's the tree that feels like that kind of tree. And, but I have no idea what the name of it is. And music was, is like that for a lot of people who don't play music. People will always tell me, I don't know how to be creative. I can never be creative. I can't write a song. I don't know what the names of chords are. And it's like, well, you don't need to know that that's an elm tree to experience its inherent elmishness and to know how it's different from spruce ones of those things. Those are names that we applied after. So I'd listen to music and I would know why music moved me, but I wouldn't necessarily know the names. And I spent a long time trying to learn how to do all that stuff. But then when I would try and write music, which was the most important part of that endeavor, I'd get caught up in, I don't think I know enough to really write yet, you know? And people will always say to me, I can't sing. It's like, well, unless you speak like this, you are singing every time you speak to someone because you're imbuing what you're saying with meaning by enhancing certain parts and going low on other parts and being quiet on other parts. You're singing every time you speak. And every time you make a meal, every time you drive home a different way, every time you play Lego, every time you construct a sentence, you're using all the muscles that a songwriter uses to write songs. So people will say, how do you get inspired to write songs? Because I wouldn't know where to begin. And it does happen sometimes, I'm telling you, if you dedicate yourself to it, these magical, like, happy birthday surprise parties will happen in your brain. Well, you'll just be walking along, mm, you know, boom! I'm a song, and I'm in your head, and I exist completely. Get to a thing where you can sing me into your phone or write me down, because I'm going to leave in a few minutes. And if you don't get me down, I'm gone. Sometimes that happens. I've had it happen too. Sometimes when I'm about to fall asleep, when you're just floating in that juicy nether region between wakefulness and bliss, where I had like five or six songs just pop into my head that I could scroll back and forth through that 
Brian, I know you're just about to fall asleep, but write these down. And sometimes you do that and you wake up the next day and go, that's already a song. I was, <laughs> I was falling asleep and my sleepy brain went, Mary did indeed have a little lamb whose fleece was, uh, let me write that down. But these, these five or six that came right before my band was making a record, I was playing them for everyone going, these can't have been handed to me this generously. So sometimes that happens. Sometimes it's like there's curtains on stage and an arm just pops through or a face like, hello? And, and, but that's all that comes and you have to fill in the rest. And if you ask any songwriter about songwriting, half of them will be like, I'm a, I'm a vessel, man, and it just like, just comes through me, man, and I don't even know. I don't want to know. It would ruin it to know. And other songwriters are like, I'm a craftsman. I need a table. A table needs four legs. I know how to build legs. I know what legs look like. I know different kinds of legs. I can finish it differently. And I think the truth lies somewhere in between those two things. But in order to get started, in order to have the idea, what I've, what I, if you leave with anything that you retain that I say, is that the raw randomness around us, you can read like sheet music. If you're lost for a place to start, just start with whatever is in front of your face. All you really need is the intent to view the world around you as repurposable, creative things. And, and if you do that, and you don't care about the finish, you don't, you don't, if we judge our little zygotes, our little embryos against other people's finished material, we would never do anything. So give yourself a space where you can play consequence free, where you can just be a little kid playing Lego for a bit. Just, just play. We forget to play. Little kids are artists. They're fearless. My daughter would stand up here right now and sing Let It Go For You without thinking about it. And then like in, when, in five years when she's eight, she would never dream of coming up here and saying a word in front of you probably. What happens in that amount of time? We get afraid of making a mistake. Well, I'm here to tell you, I've made incredible mistakes in front of more people than I've ever seen in my life. And the secret is to just do it twice or to just pretend that you meant it. I fell over the back of my amp opening for ACDC in front of 50 or 60,000 people. <laughs> I've, sung, I've sung the worst harmonic possibilities over things before. If the chord is like this and I came out with a, oh yeah, it's jazz now, I'm gonna, I'm going to give this to you over and over until your ears that aren't as advanced as mine recognize that that's a wicked note that I just sang. That's all you have to do. It really is. If it's just play, if you're just playing, nobody's going to die. Nothing bad at all can happen. And you just might find yourself while you're doing it. It's really the truth. That's the truth as I know it. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>